think everybody asks all the time, how did a kid from a construction family in Jersey uh, become a orthopedic surgeon? And when I got uh, into college, I played a little football. I stepped in a hole running down the field and I broke my ankle. This doctor came in uh, to the emergency room at you know, midnight and he ended up hanging out together for about two hours. And he was just awesome. So why don't you come to surgery? He wants me to come into the operating room and watch his partner do a surgery and his partner was doing a hip replacement. This guy takes a saw to somebody's leg and cuts off part of the hip. Well, get a load of this. He takes the ball and tosses it to me. I catch like the ball with my gloves, the ball of this lady's hip. And I look down, I'm like, all right, this is pretty cool. 30 years later, 30 years later, I still teach medical students and residents and other doctors from, from, from different parts of the country. And when I cut that head off, I still toss it to them. My partner now, and how we got back together 20 some years later, was one of my mentors. One was Bob Falconero and uh, Fred Baldwini. Watching these guys not only be great humans, not only be great doctors, but being happy at what they're doing and just loving every day they go to work. I mean, it wasn't hard uh, to think, well, I'd sure like to be like that as well. I was, I played in the NFL. I, I went to, played college football. Um, I'm a very active person. And the last four or five years before the surgery, I went from being extremely active to making excuses with my teenage kids why I couldn't go skiing and making excuses why I couldn't wrestle with them and making excuses why I couldn't play beach volleyball with them because I couldn't do it for more than three or four or five minutes. This week I did 20 surgeries, right? All 20 of those people, right? They were obviously in pain when they came. Uh, probably eight to 10 or 12 of them probably couldn't walk, right? On a hip or knee replacement. And uh, we did their surgery. And two hours after the operation, I walk next door and they're walking down the hall. I think it makes you feel, you know, pretty special. In March, I was in Florida on spring break um, with my kids and I played beach volleyball for two hours. And I came back in and texted Mike and sent him a long message and said, you know, thanks for being a great friend. Thanks for being great at your craft and thanks for coming to my life because it literally changed my life. I am what you might call a wantrepreneur. Uh, you've heard of an entrepreneur, right? Well, they actually make money because they come up with ideas. I come up with 10 ideas that didn't make any money, so I deem myself a entrepreneur. 2008, we all know what happened with the economy. And in August of that year, uh, we found out that our bank was taken over by the government. All of our money was gone. We only had enough money to build half of it. So there was this space sitting next to it. And I kept thinking, what can we do in that space? It's my building. What can we put in there that's related to what I do that maybe is something better, right, and different. Why don't we put patient rooms, make them like a hotel, like a five-star hotel, and why don't we do our joint replacements uh, here in this building? The challenges that followed uh, were probably uh, as exciting as the idea itself, since joint replacement had never been done outside uh, of the hospital setting. He pushes, he looks through a boulder and sees the end and he knows how to get there. He has changed the face of healthcare, I think, from an innovation perspective in Las Vegas. Instead of just accepting the status quo, he always um, will go above and beyond and he doesn't take the answer no. And he'll just push the boundaries and make sure that patient care is at the very, very top. And that's the most important thing. Five years later, six years later, we've got 1,520 patients done. Infection rates, 0.2%. Readmissions to hospitals, less than a percent of somebody going back to the emergency room. And now they've got 1,500 uh, disciples out there uh, telling them about hip and knee replacement and why it's such a great idea. Congrats, Dad! Our dad has inspired us to want to become physicians pretty much our whole lives. You know, when we were growing up, we used to get so excited to sit down at the dinner table and hear his stories from the day. And as we got older, we got to become a part of those stories, hang out with him in rounds and in the operating room. Our favorite part. <laughs> We're so blessed to learn the art of medicine from someone that embodies what it means to become a physician. 
That is someone who truly cares for others and works hard every day to make people better. We're so, so proud of you, Dad. Congratulations. We love, we love you. you. Thanks for being my inspiration on a day-to-day -day basis and that I love him. Now, where are you going to be in five years? Where, where do you want to be in five years? I said right here. This is bonus time. So all the things I get to do now are because I want to do them. I get to do them because it makes me happy, patients happy, my family happy. That's what makes it great.